Hey everybody, Tony here. Hope you're doing well. It is Friday, January 25th. Hope you're holding strong. Uh, this is not financial or investment advice. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscription button. Also, thumbs up. I've got a lot of positive news to share here with you guys. Let's jump into it. The first is NYSE ARCA files paperwork for Bitwise Bitcoin ETF approval. We have another player in the game for the Bitcoin ETF. And as we know, the CBOE just withdrew the uh, VanEck Bitcoin ETF from the SEC, citing the government shutdown that the SEC is working on a skeleton crew. They may have denied it just because of that, or uh, it may have been auto approved if the SEC didn't look at it. But I don't think they wanted to have both scenarios because auto approved means that uh, the SEC can withdraw that approval at any time. So I think it was smart of them to withdraw it and then resubmit once the government is fully back open, which right now, as far as the news we got today, it is open for another three weeks, or I should I should say reopen for three weeks, and then they have to renegotiate again. So it's a mess right now. I think all of these things are affecting crypto for sure because the CFTC, uh, I should say, backed is waiting for the CFTC's approval as well, but we know with the partial partial government shutdown these things have just been affecting um decisions and and the, you know the, the timing and the processing of all these uh decisions well let me give you details here new details have surfaced about the bitcoin exchange traded fund proposed by bitwise and nyse arca bitwise asset management announced its intention to launch the etf earlier this month if approved, it would be the first Bitcoin ETF to make it to the market in the U.S. At the time, the company said NYSE ARCA uh, would file the 19B-4 rule change proposed in the near future. NYSE ARCA indeed filed the form the same day, but it does not appear to be listed on any SEC website, possibly due to the ongoing U.S. government shutdown. As a result, the document went largely unnoticed despite being posted on NYSE's ARCA's own uh, website. Uh, an SEC spokesperson did not immediately respond to a request for a comment, so Coindesk tried to get some details. When Bitwise first announced the ETF proposal, the company said it differed from previous such efforts because a regulated third-party custodian would store the Bitcoins. That's significant. Um, one of the concerns I would imagine the SEC would have. The company also said it would draw pricing data from a large number of exchanges, including both spot and physically settled futures markets to calculate the index determining the asset's value. So it sounds like they got their ducks in a row here. And... Uh, but it still goes back to, you know, the SEC dragging their feet and with the government shutdown, I don't know what's going to happen here. But I mean, it looks like they're addressing the major concerns that the SEC would have. The file proposal elaborates on the method methodology, noting, for example, that prices will be weighed such that Bitcoin prices from exchanges with a much with a greater amount of trading volume in the prior hour are weighed more heavily than Bitcoin prices from exchanges with lesser amounts of volume. The exchange believes that the proposed rule change is designed to prevent fraudulent and manipulative acts and practices and to protect investors and public interests. Uh, the proposal says in previous ETF rejections, the SEC has highlighted concerns about market manipulation. So maybe they have, uh, you know, the, 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 the solution here to address the SEC's concerns. But guys another ETF and um, it's going to be a Bitcoin ETF war it looks like because you have these major players getting in and this shows what's to come in the crypto market these people are not playing around here they're putting a lot of time resources and money into building out services and technology to for the growth of this market guys now I we were talking about back the other day about them hiring their acquisition the money they raise and they're hiring right in the time where the prices are crazy low. ETFs are getting withdrawn and denied, right? And there's delays and so forth, but that is not hindering them. And what I want to show here is Fidelity Digital Assets. You know, guys know Fidelity, um, who will be launching their crypto services later this year. 
they posted that they are hiring. So they said, devs interested in building the future of finance with us. We are looking for software engineers to join our team. This unique opportunity requires expertise in crypto, math, finance, Ethereum, uh, computer science, apply at jobs.fidelity.com. So the hiring, the acquisitions, the mergers, the building out of services is still happening. And that's how smart money moves. When there's blood on the streets, or you know, when the weak hands are getting shaked out, they are building and buying up and getting ready for the takeoff of the market. So for us, as the early adopters of Pioneers, we have to be patient and let it happen. But I'm sharing the facts here with you guys. That's why I like to share it with you so that you understand what's happening. You have the holistic view, the big world view versus just price, 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 which, you know, if you're moving with the flows of the price, that, that can, you know, get you uh, confused as to what's happening, um, you know, just make you lose confidence. But you got to, as I always, always state, watch what the big money is doing and the government. So uh, both back and Fidelity hiring, building out. Now, moving ahead, Morgan Creek Capital, uh, excuse me, Morgan Creek Digital joins $3.1 million round of, of funding for tokenized real estate firm. So as we've been talking about tokenized economy. Now, I know the folks from Morgan Creek, Mark Yusko and Anthony Popliano. So these guys are really cool. I met them um, at the Blockworks Christmas party. So here's myself and Mark. Um, really nice guys. You've probably seen them on CNBC and all that stuff. But um, Institutional Digital Assets Manager Morgan Creek Digital has backed a $3.1 million seed round for tokenized real estate startup real blocks. What have we been talking about here? Everything will be tokenized. We're headed to the token economy. Stocks, real estate, commodities, all these things will be tokenized. Announcing the news on Friday, real, real blocks said that the funding... Uh, round was led by early stage investment firm Science Incorporated, while other investors, including Zelkova Ventures, Yulu Ventures, and Cross Culture Ventures, uh, Realbox founder and CEO Petrin Kwaishai explained in the announcement that the investment would help the firm speed up the development of its pro uh, pr platform. Realbox is an Ethereum based real estate platform that allows firms to raise capital through tokenized securities. So it goes back to what I've been talking about, why I'm still bullish on Ethereum. And I've told you guys, I divert, I personally diversify. I personally believe XRP will be the biggest winner coming out of this market with you, its utility and use case, but there will be other winners. And Ethereum, I'm still bullish on Ethereum because of all the adoption I see around it. There are other folks like, and don't get me wrong, I hold Cardano and Cardano looks promising, but I need to see more. I need to see partnerships. I need to see real, real world adoption, not just concept, not just talk, right? And like I said, I hold Cardano in my portfolio because I'm I'm hoping, you know, it looks promising, but I'm not all in like I am on Ethereum. So I hope you guys get my approach to it. Um, so looks like, uh, you know, Morgan Creek, they're, they're making the, the investments here. And these guys are definitely into, you know, bullish on crypto. And they are, in, you know, obviously they're making these type of investments as well, but they are invested in traditional crypto, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and so forth. Um, so big things ahead. Now, we have some XRP FUD, guys. It never ceases to amaze me the new stuff people keep coming up with because it's like uh, they come up with FUD. That FUD gets, you know, uh, destroyed by Ripple because Ripple's transparent. They come out, they say, hey, no, that's not true. Here's how it actually works. And this is actually coming from Misari uh, this company, crypto data startup Masari, they get paid to to essentially provide data and do research, right? Um, so they said in a new report that they estimate the true market capitalization of circulating supply of digital asset XRP is mark less than what data sources currently present. As depicted on data providers like CoinMarketCap as well as Ripple, the distributed ledger tech uh, tech company closely linked to the digital asset XRP circling XRP circulating supply is pegged at roughly 41 billion tokens. But in its report, Misari posits that of that figure, 19.2 billion XRP may be liquid or subject to significant selling restrictions tied to daily trading volume, including at least 6.7 
billion XRP held by Ripple co-founder Jeb McCaleb that are subject to an agreement between him and Ripple. In addition, Masari said that it believes that the circulating figure includes 5.9 billion XRP pledged by Ripple co-founder to a non-profit entity called RippleWorks, an amount that it contended hasn't been delivered. As well, Masari identified 2.5 billion XRP held by RippleWorks that are also subject to daily selling restrictions. Now, let me give you the backstory on this, right? And I'll explain what they call out there. This is all backed by this guy named um, Ryan Sulkis. He's the founder of Misari. Um, and he has a very long history with Ripple, with trying to start fights with Ripple, trying to call out Ripple with certain things, and each time he gets ha his ass handed to him. And I'm going to give you an example. Last year, May 10th, 2018, he, he tweeted at Brad Garlinghouse saying, I believe that Ripple Incorporated Tech is legit, but it's important to note how little XRP is required to facilitate these transactions even under the rosiest scenarios. It's not a reserve slash bridge currency until some institutions actually buy and hold it at market exchange rate. Now, this is in May. And remember what we saw, X Rapid launch, three clients went live. Ripple also released a report about institutions buying XRP directly from them, right? They've been transparent, They've been, and we've heard about folks piloting X-Rapid. So he said this, and then Brad Garlinghouse actually responded to him saying, Ryan, you demonstrate in this comment how little you understand about X-Rapid and Ripple's products. In fact, every X-Rapid transaction leverage, uh, leverage, excuse me, leverage XRP. I don't mind well-educated skeptics, right? Bring facts, bring education to this logic, right? But you continue to spread misinformation. He did not reply to this tweet, by the way, guys. So there's a history here. Now, he said since he released this report that apparently someone called him and, and he's trying to blame it on the XRP community. And he's like crying to the folks at Ripple. Um, and uh, let's see here. Let me pull it up for you guys. Where he's saying... Folks, someone called him and, and mentioned his wife's birthday or something, and they didn't say anything about XRP or Ripple, but he's trying to tweet at the folks at Ripple. It looks like he may have deleted it, um, saying, you need to denounce this by the XRP community, but he has no proof that he um, it was somebody from the XRP community. So this guy is, I don't know, looking for attention and spreading FUD, but I do want to address, guys, what is being said here. Now, I believe that for sure, some of the XRP, for example, what Jeb McCaleb has, some of it is being held. Doesn't mean he can't sell because remember, Jeb was selling, if you guys recall, I think it was Q3, Q3 of 2018, he was selling some of the XRP and so forth, right? Um, and there's XRP in escrow and so forth. So there's a lot of moving parts here. But this is no different from any other crypto. And I'm going to give you an example. Where is the million... Bitcoin that Satoshi owns, whoever Satoshi is. I don't know who that is or if it's a group person or whatever. Where is that million Bitcoin? Nobody can answer that. There's also um, a lot of Bitcoin that is, uh, what do you call it? I think it has to do with Craig Wright with, he's go he's expected to get, I think, think, a significant amount of Bitcoin. I can't remember the details there. But this is no different from Bitcoin and many other cryptos where not every, uh, because some of it is used in different ways. And we know Ripple, of course, has been selling XRP and is XRP in the market. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's locked up because they are right now, they are speculating a lot of this stuff. They actually don't have proof. They're just saying, here's what we think is happening. Um, so... I think this is just a bunch of FUD and it's no different from any other crypto because if you were to do this with, I don't know, Tron or whoever else, right, you would probably find a lot of these uh, certain amounts are positioned in a certain way where it's not maybe liquid for selling right now. But like I said, it's this no, nothing here that he said is different from what was going on, let's say, with Bitcoin, right? Like I said, where is the one million Satoshi Bitcoin that Satoshi owns? Where is it? What happened to it? Nobody can answer that question. So I hope you guys understand that. Uh, I'm a realist. I'm, in, uh, I'm about facts. And if 
Ripple was indeed, if they uncovered something and they said, oh, I don't know, Brad Garlinghouse, for, just as an example, did something with the XRP that would undermine, I don't know, something that he was doing undermining like the potential growth and just trying to cash money, get get the money or whatever, then I would say, dude, this is wrong. I would be tweeting at Brad Garlinghouse and Ripple. I would be doing videos calling them out. No BS. I would call them out. I would tweet David Schwartz, all of them, saying, hey, this, this what the hell is going on? Are you guys scamming people? I would do that. I have no problem doing it because I'm factual base. But this is just speculating and we think and also it's like, uh, what's going on with the other cryptos? There's nothing unique here or different here. Um, but I think this is just a FUD job. Um, and I think uh, XRP Research Center, <laughs> uh, you know, kind of rounded up some of the FUD here. Cent first, it's a centralized ledger. It's not a crypto, not blockchain, but database. Ripple controls it. Ripple will flood the market. These are and going back right to the, all the issues and Ripple has addressed it and show people, no, that's not what we're doing here. For example, they said like Ripple will flood the market and then they locked up everything in escrow and then they moved on to the next foot. No one will use it. They've been they were saying that for a long time. And then, uh, oh, yeah, X Rapid goes live and we have uh, institutions using it right now. It's too fast. If you guys remember from the guy from one of those hedge funds, it's too fast for the price to go up. Market cap is manipulated. Digital fiat is better. Community, the XRP community is a bunch of bots. It just keeps on going. I don't know what the hell they're going to come up with next. I think what this is, a lot of the Bitcoin and Ethereum holders, though, especially those who got in early, are very scared of the potential XRP. Here's why. And this includes Litecoin as well, because those three were you know around for a long time. Here's why. XRP is a superior technology to all three of them. Faster, cheaper to use, more scalable, more transactions per second. So right away, just from a technical standpoint and usability, it's way better. XRP is going to be used for the, with the biggest use case out there, which is the movement of money globally by banks and financial institutions. Um, so its use case is going to be unprecedented, right? And, and, and they are scared of that because the potential of what XRP can do, guys, it can leave all these crypto in, on ground level and go up to the top, right? Uh, they are very scared. Uh, and it also, the, the progress that Ripple continues to make, they see the announcements, they see all, the, all these things. And there's some jealousy involved there where, you know, I think a lot of the Bitcoin maximums will love to have that type of, they, they, they say they're anti-banks. But they're not. They they want the money, big money to come in, and big money involves banks, and a lot of the the folks who are holding it right now are involved with with investment banks and so forth. So, the hypocrisy is 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 so blatant. It's it's it. it I just don't get it. But anyway, um, I hope you guys get what I'm saying, and that XRP has the biggest use case. And there's you know, when you're doing something right, and especially these other projects are struggling, and they have the, the, the look at the, look at the Ethereum. Look at what happened. Where's the Constantinople update? And I I hold Ethereum, I hold Bitcoin, but I I'm, I'm I can do you know have constructive criticism. I can look at the facts, and this is what's going on, guys. It's just fud after fud after fud. But you know, the market will mature, and and these people who are just spreading FUD and not actually actively working. Maybe instead of spreading FUD, they should be working on putting Bitcoin in a lightning network and actually improving the technology and worrying about what China is going to do because they control the hash rate, what's going to happen, right? So uh, anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Just want to let you guys know about that. Uh, quick note, Paycent, they said, today is the day Ripple XRP will be available on the Paycent app. Cash out your XRP and other cryptocurrency globally to the Paycent card. So a uh, big adoption here. And uh, we continue to see the businesses at least and not the fudsters, the businesses who recognize the potential of XRP, continue to list it, continue to use it as a base currency, continue to to add a uh, fiat pairing to it. And that's what's that what that is what matters, not the fudsters, not the people caught up in crypto religious feelings um, and all kinds of crazy crap. But the, the businesses, the people who are serious about this are making the right moves. So 
Also, Coinfield just reiterated the available pairs they have as far as XRP um, with USD, Canadian, Euro, Great Britain, Britain Pound, Japanese Yen, and so forth. So they um, had also, I believe, added XRP as a base currency. So shout out to Coinfield. Um, also, as you know, Bitstamp is an X Rapid Exchange partner. Um, I used to use them to buy my XRP a long time ago when they were the only ones who had fiat pairing. But uh, shout out to XRP Research Center who found this. Bitstamp, a cryptocurrency exchange that has partnered with Ripple to conduct X Rapid transactions, announced today a new partnership with Duscopy Bank, a leading Swiss online banks uh, online banks to enable crypto funding on their platform. Big, big stuff, guys. Um, and this is why all, all the Bitcoin Maxis and other people are so afraid of XRP. They wish they can get this type of activity and partnership and, and, and so forth, right? Um, I, I, I totally believe that. It is a lot of jealousy. There's a lot of fear because uh, if XRP were to take off, that means you know their, their crypto might lose value and people would not even want to invest in it. That is a big part of what's going on. Ripple is actually trying to build a, you know, a great company to, to solve a real world issue. And these people don't see that. They just see crypto war and crypto religious feelings and whatever, right? Um, here we have some news. Bitcoin ATM startups say they're booming thanks in part to Venezuela. So we all know the stuff that's going on in Venezuela, guys. Inflation, money is worth nothing. Uh, people are turning to crypto. So companies behind the world's Bitcoin ATM networks say their market is alive and well. Matias Goldenhorn, director of Latin America operations at the ATM operator Athena Bitcoin, told Coindesk that such ATMs are becoming a real alternative to banks for diverse users in emerging markets. The machines have proven resilient to the price fluctuations, he said. In, indeed, Coin ATM Radar estimates there are now 4,213 cryptocurrency ATM machines deployed worldwide most of which strictly offer Bitcoin compared to roughly 471 machines worldwide in January 2015. So we're seeing more and more of this. If you guys remember, I did that interview with uh, the owner of that uh, Wings restaurant where he has a Bitcoin, uh, I, sh I should say a crypto ATM because it has multiple cryptos, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and so forth. Um, and he, you know, we talked about how he implemented that and what's been going on and people paying with crypto. And I think at, we'll see more of this as, you have these uh, really bad governments and authoritarian, authoritarian, corrupt governments and so forth who are, you know, just driving the countries into the ground. You're probably going to see more crypto uh, ATMs and people adopting it They're coming from there. And, and uh, they're, they're almost unknowingly tr helping crypto to grow. Um, so this is interesting, guys. Very interesting. And like I said, I have nothing against Bitcoin. I don't have anything against Ethereum. I hold in my portfolio. Um, they do have their flaws, respectively, and I can constructively criticize them. But I also understand their pros and their cons, right? It, well, their pros, I just mentioned their flaws. But uh, And likewise, I could do that with XRP. But I look at the potential, I look at the adoption, I look at the utility, and obviously I'm, I'm here to make money. I don't have any specific religious feelings or this, I, you know, I'm this because it's going to destroy the banks and whatever. And um, it, like I, I've said before, these people who want to destroy banks, if they were true believers, they would be doing Project Mayhem, um, uh, which was in from the movie Fight Club, right? Uh, they would be trying to take the government back, not not uh taking a cryptocurrency which is already being bitcoin and, and these others which is already being owned by the big money and they don't even know it. they're so ignorant to what's happening um you have backed you have all these companies and these big institutions which are backed by banks and investors and they are holding a ton of bitcoin and all these cryptos and uh these guys who run around maybe they have 10 bitcoin or 20 maybe have 30 they think they're they have they're gonna take down the banks with thirty bitcoin when these like uh we saw like grayscale investment the investment bank they have a what was it one one percent of all circulating bitcoin the facts elude these people um and that's why I I tried to bring the facts here not my personal uh, biases or feelings but what's going on let's look at it factually logically and reasonably here uh, finally guys. I always tell you, watch what the big money, watch what the governments are doing. Italy's settle, uh, Senate moves to set legal foundation for blockchain timestamps. 
document stamping and validation of digital documents. The country's Senate, the Senato de la Repubblica, on Wednesday published a proposal to add distributed ledger technology and smart contract related terms to Senate Act 989 passed in December 2018, as well as including definitions of blockchain and smart contracts in the amendment. It, it proposes that the recording of an electric document using technologies based on distributed ledgers produces the legal effects of electricity of electronic time validation referred to as article 41 of eu regulation number 910 slash 2014 anyway i don't want to bore you with all the details but we are seeing both crypto and blockchain just being uh integrated into our systems now slowly but surely and uh the future is bright guys and and if you're just paying attention to the price you're missing all of these things that are happening so i hope you see the bigger picture here don't have tunnel vision, don't have short-term vision, have long-term. Understand the moving parts. Understand we are in the infrastructure stage. We're very early in this market. And, um, you know, when you have backed and Fidelity Digital Assets and all Eris X and all these people loading up on crypto, getting ready to offer crypto trading services and custody services, what do you think is going to happen, guys? These people need to make uh, a return on their investment. They need to make profit. They have investors they have to answer to, and mass marketing will follow once all you know the legal clarity part is out of the way. Uh, expect mass marketing; it's coming. Uh, but like I said, we got to be patient. So I hope you guys see the the vision here. Of what's of what's happening? Because right now, smart money, big money are they're doing so many big things, and. Um, Guys, what do you think about this news? Leave your thoughts and comments below. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Links in the description. Please help share this video on uh, Facebook and Twitter and also with your friends and family so they can learn uh, about the facts of what's happening in the market, guys, not just the price movements because the headlines will say Bitcoin crash and it's down 90%. But it, it, folks, many folks don't know what's happening behind the scenes. These these type of movements from the big money because price uh, is affected by many things, right? Bear and bull markets, um, you know, just FUD, just, uh, you know, the waiting of the infrastructure to be set up. So, guys, we'd love to hear what you think. Thank you for your support, and I'll talk to you all later.